the magicians. The picture of death. I don't know, said Blake, the emperor of the magicians, to his cousin, his heir apparent, Aureus. Nervously, it's alright, it's just a birthday present, said Aureus. Aureus showed him a picture of Blake's son sitting in a chair, leaning on an axe. Blake looked puzzled. Lance posed for me. It's called the Necromancer, said Aureus. Why Lance? asked Blake. Why not? said Aureus. Lance was the real Necromancer. Blake knew it. Not many people knew who the Necromancer was. Yes, why not? said Blake. Blake thought Lance posed as a joke. Will you pose for me? asked Aureus. As long as I'm clothed, said Blake, blushing. Looking at another picture, a nude, Aureus had painted. It looks superb quality, but it embarrassed the modest Blake. He recognised the model. It was Lance again. It made Blake squirm. Whatever you like, said Aureus. Thank you, said Blake. Blake arrived at Aureus' studio again. Later that week, Aureus wasn't alone. Lance's son was there, posing for a nude painting. Blake recoiled in horror. Hey, Dad, said Lance. Not flinching or covering up. Blake was scared. All he could do was look Lance in the eyes. He must be cold. Said Blake, trying to act calm. I'm fine, said Lance, enjoying messing with his father's mind. Why are you here? To pose, said Blake nervously. I'd like to see that, said Lance, with a wry smile. Lance knew doing a nude picture would embarrass his dad. He thought it would be a sight to see. Okay, if you like, Lance, said Aureus. You can redress. The picture's finished. Lance redressed and looked at the picture. It was photo quality. Lance looked over himself in the picture, and he was impressed. It's really good. Dad, you have to look at it, said Lance. I already saw more than I ever wanted. To see of you, said Blake, blushing. Are you going to do a strip tease? asked the son, teasing his dad to make him more uneasy. No, shouted Blake nervously. You have to get undressed to pose, said Lance. Not me, said Blake. Coward, said the son. Yeah. He's posing clothed. Or a pose as a stage magician, said Aureus. No, fair, protested Lance. He was enjoying teasing his prudish dad. Lance fought. His dad posing as his stage persona, Blakefire, would be boring, so he left. Blake changed into the next room, into his stage costume. Sit in the chair here, said Aureus, and he replaced the canvas of the nude Lance. For a fresh one, and said, "Smile, Blake." Blake did, feeling awkward sitting in the same chair as his naked son. Aureus began to paint him. It was a masterpiece. When he finished, Blake was very impressed. When it dried, Aureus got it framed and gave it to his cousin. His wife refused to have it in the house. His partner in his stage act was jealous. He didn't have a picture too. So he said the picture was not alone in the theatre. They could only put the picture in one place. His office in the afterlife. It was the worst place for it.
is that your picture? asked Lance, seeing it there. Yes, nice, isn't it? said Blake. No, it would look better without clothes, teased Lance. I'll go kill someone, boy, moaned Blake, the mortified king of the Grim Reapers. To the Reaper Prince, Lance. Lance was noted. As their boss, Fate's assassin. Seriously, the reporter you asked to see, all the exclusive interview with Death, is here to see you. I don't like the idea, said Lance. Who's a reaper? Then, I don't like the idea either. It's Fate's idea. Said Blake, Fate was into Reapers doing publicity stunts. This was just another bad stunt. Tell Dante to show him in. It's a woman, said Lance. Then show her in, said Blake. Lance left Blake. He sat behind his desk and began reading and signing forms. To look busy. When the reporter arrived, there was a knock on the door. Blake shouted back, come in. In the room walked another Grim Reaper, Blake's assistant, Dante, with a woman. Are you Mortimer, the king of the Grim Reapers? Sorry, you all look the same to me, said the woman. We all look different. Look at the burn structure said Blake. She did. They did look different. She spied the picture on the wall. Why don't we take a photo of you? said the reporter. All right, said Blake. She took a photo of Mortimer and the picture. Is that picture of you in life? asked the reporter. What picture? asked Blake, forgetting the painting. The picture of the magician? asked the reporter. Maybe, said Blake cryptically. It looks like it was made by a master. Who was the artist? Asked the reporter. The masked chicken, Blake laughed. He painted it, said the reporter. Yeah, said Blake. Who'd have thought he'd be a good artist, said the reporter. He's amazing, Blake said. He is, said the reporter. Who is the picture of? Asked the reporter. Blake fired the stage magician said Aureus, after being shown the picture the next day. Wonder why Blake gave it to Mortimer, Blake said. He put it in his office. Blake turned on the television to Channel 900 now, said Max, Blake's best friend, his partner in his stage magic act. Blake was at home, watching the new series of Neighbours. I'm busy watching Neighbours. What is it? snapped Blake to his mobile phone. No, this is serious tape Neighbours. Said Max, appearing out of thin air. Nothing is that serious, said Blake. Who was the Neighbours fan? Max snatched the remote. And changed the channel. Hey, snapped Blake sharply. Then he saw himself on the TV, on his show, The Blake Report. What? said Blake. We repeat, said the reporter. Who spoke to Blake in his afterlife office? On the screen was the text. 
Like fire is dead, deposed as Emperor of the Magicians, as he has been discovered to be the King of the Grim Reapers. The superhero, Blue Midnight, has admitted to being a dead man, thus he has been a pretender to the role of leader of his people and ruler of the solar system. His son, the Enchanter, has gone on the run as he has been identified as the Necromancer, who is wanted as a serial killer by the police, said the TV. What did you do? asked Max shortly. I let Aureus paint me, snapped Blake. I put his painting in my office and let her see it. Talked to her about it when she interviewed me. You did what? said Max. I think I stopped up, said Blake. What was she doing in your office? said Max. Paint organized it, said Blake. He's a bigger fool than the Mars Chicken ever was. And you're a close second, said Max, frustrated. Blake grimaced. Later, while Blake's wife was living alone in the house, as Blake had moved into the afterlife office, in their large backyard, she got a visitor. Hello, Angela, said Aureus, nervously appearing inside her living room. Hello. What do you want, Aureus? Said Angela Alexander, seeing him. I'm sorry about what happened. Said Aureus, I didn't know how Blake could run the afterlife and the solar system at the same time. He's a workaholic. He gives 110% to himself, said Angela. I need help. I can't cope with just one of his jobs, said Aureus. He said you might come for help, said Angela. What did he say? asked Aureus. It's your job, you do it, Angela said. Aureus looked shocked. He couldn't cope. She watched him and chuckled. What? Aureus snapped. Just testing you. You really need him, said Angela. Did I pass the test? asked Aureus. Yes. Will you help me? asked Aureus. Yes, said Angela. How do I contact him? asked Aureus. Come with me, said Angela, and walked to the back door of the house, followed by Aureus. Is he gardening? In the backyard? Aureus asked. No, Angela said. They walked for a while in the backyard, which seemed endless and very pretty. There was an imperceptible portal in space and time in the garden leading to the afterlife. I didn't know you had a castle in your backyard, said Aureus, seeing the office at the entrance of the Afterlife? Is Blake here? Aureus asked. Yes, she said, knocking on the door. To it. Finding it locked. The door opened. Hi, Mum, said Lance, answering the door. As a human. Seeing her. We're expected. Said Lance's stepmom. I know, he told me, said Lance, letting them in, and said, Follow me. They did. They walked through the wooden halls of the Gothic building till they got to a desk. 
Reaper sitting behind it. Is that Blake? Asked Aureus. No, that's Dante. His assistant, said Lance. Hello, chicken, said Dante. Hello, said Aureus nervously, not knowing who Dante was. He's waiting for you. Go in, said Dante. Lance led them in. Blake was a man in a black shirt and pants, sitting behind a desk, littered with papers. Seeing them, he rose and walked over to them and kissed his wife. Thanks for bringing him here, honey. To her? You're welcome, said his wife. Aureus was walking to look at the picture he painted. It looks good here, said Aureus. Yeah, agreed Blake. Funny how a simple thing like a picture could cause such a big problem, said Lance. Blake, I'm sorry I painted it now, said Aureus. It's all right. Times must change. I was bound to be caught dead sometime. Everyone has a time to die. This is as good as any time to kill myself off. Like I said, I'll help you with your work behind the scenes. Just ask Angela. She'll take you here. And I'll pass the enchantments which are in the garden to prevent people from escaping the afterlife. 